Hey Vapo community and welcome back to another Flow Ninjas video. In this video, we're going to be going over, over our new research, which is going to make sure that you actually launch your website like a true Webflow expert. So let's jump straight into it. Our uh, free research is like starting off you know, with a kind of funny quote is like if something is really complicated you're probably doing something wrong so like we can see a, a lot of times when we're going over this kind of punch list a lot of bugs can occur and sometimes you can spend a lot of time that is not really necessary to fix the bug so the always the, the best thing is just to grab a cup of coffee to chill out to go ahead and sleep and fix the bugs tomorrow instead of wasting maybe unnecessary time in making sure that it's good so that's why we actually created this punch list with a way that you can actually add your name you can add your project name so let's do flow ninjas site and we can add www.flow.ninja and we have local storage and even let's check the first one so when you do reload the page itself you can come back to it you're gonna say welcome back or let's continue and you're gonna have all of the data saved uh, on your local storage just make sure that you don't uh, kind of use a different browser, different laptop or whatever when actually going through the punch list. And you're going to be able to pretty easily come back to this. And even if you're doing this punch list over a week's period of time for the project, you're going to be able to be able to go ahead and check everything and make sure that it's running smoothly as expected. So the first thing we're going to be going over is the style guide. So we want to like if you want to kick off a Webflow project, kind of the way we're kicking it off at Flow Ninja. You can clone our free resource, kind of the flow starter on our website. Um, go research about how we build Webflow websites, what class naming system we use, and the overall process on that side. Um, and based off that style guide, we've compiled a checklist here of which, what you can check. First things first are the global heading tags. So we want to go ahead and make sure that every single one of our heading tags is global. We even add, uh, have an additional jumbo heading in this case, where like because of the design itself. So based off of that, uh, we uh, have headings. We want to make sure that all of the headings are global or all of the paragraphs are global. The big text are global, texts, quotes, labels, uh, lists, etc., etc. And all of those items are global and are up updated according to the design and then scaled kind of downwards to the mobile devices uh, in the proper way. So uh, we can check that off. The next thing is rich text. So for rich, rich text, I see a lot of people actually forgetting to just see how those margins, paddings work in the rich text, how the list element works in the rich text. Uh, do they have a custom fit caption that, that they can design in a nice way? The image, uh, is it designed in a nice way, etc., etc. So the more design features you add to that, kind of the more advanced you can go. But it's always good that we have a set base that we make sure that everything is going nice. So we can check this off. Then the next thing are global colors. So in our flow ninja, I mean, in our flow starter, when you do duplicate that, you have the file for Figma and you have the file for Webflow. We have global swatches for colors. So we want to make sure that we name the colors like, like 100, 200, 300, etc., etc., et in a shaded way so that we don't end up in classes like navyish, grayish, or whatever, and that you don't know which color is lighter or darker. Uh, when naming classes like Big Navy 100, 200, 300, etc., etc., you're going to make sure that you can always uh, kind of really easily copy what you have in Figma. If you need a shade lighter or darker, you're just going to play around with classes and use that. And that is the same again for neutrals, for state scholars, and then also for text scholars. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier if you have these kind of neutral colors in the end. Then uh, the next thing we're going over are buttons. Like kind of when creating designs, we feel like kind of designers can go mayhem on creating all sorts of different buttons. And sometimes we even as developers take the responsibility in making sure that those buttons are actually created in a nice way. Uh, in an easy systematic way. So on our case, on our website, we were doing a, let's say a repositioning rebrand recently. So we have new before all the classes. So that's what you're probably gonna get, uh, what you're gonna see that is uh, not usual from the flow starter. Uh, but you can see that we have new button, we have new button small, you have new button navy, new button navy small, new jumbo button and new jumbo button navy small. Based off of this, uh, we like creating these custom classes so that we don't end up overriding and creating too many button designs, colors or whatever. I mean, the other approach you can go ahead and take is having the new button actually 
be, I mean, having the button being the base class and then having the override global color to, to be the override. But we feel sometimes you can end up in a zillion of button classes and not actually know how to properly follow your design style guide uh, with, with uh, kind of that function. Then uh, the next thing is custom inputs and form fields. So in our case, we have dark and light inputs. So we just went, went ahead and designed how are they're going to look on a dark background, how they're going to be looking on a light background. So we just have two variants to pull from. Um, and yeah, you just want to make sure that you override the default styles from Flow Starter and actually use the design uh, that's matching your client's design. Then the next thing is pretty easy. Uh, I mean, the containers themselves, um, you want to make sure that you add the container in a way that the uh, clients actually are using the container. So setting the max width to their grid size, setting the gutter on the sides to their kind of design, um, you, you have full freedom to go ahead and kind of adjust this the way your client needs to be and or even add custom breakpoints and add different containers for different breakpoints. And then in terms of the grid itself, um, like every single project you see on our site, we like having a little bit more gutters between the grid itself. Uh, you can adjust the grid to be fully custom for every single project and then use it that way. On our site, we're using a 12 grid and then kind of scaling it down to tablet, uh, mobile, etc., uh, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So we're good on that front also. Then the next things is kind of global margin and padding classes. As we have global margins, kind of these are paddings. It doesn't necessarily mean that for every single project that the padding tree Excel is going to be 160, 160. As you're developing, usually kind of we like to do this um, kind of on fly. As you're developing, we're probably going to be using these classes and then adjusting them slowly to fit how our website is flowing. And go ahead and implement that uh, kind of for paddings, implementing for margins, margin bot XXS doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be 8 pixels every single time. Sometimes it can be 16, sometimes it can be 4, but you're going to adjust that as you're developing the website. Same thing is for max width classes. Uh, we like having the max width classes uh, be labeled also so that we don't end up in max width 900 and then max width 1000 and then 50 different classes in between those two, uh, which is not going to be a fun thing to manage kind of in, in the future. And then like, especially as we're working at Flow Ninja with enterprise clients, managing two and a half thousand plus pages uh, is just not going to be maintainable in that way. Then uh, we want to go ahead and make sure that our navigation and the footer is in a simple format and is the same on every single page. So you can see that our nav is uh, kind of a symbol, footer is a symbol also, and we have the same navigation and the same footer on every single page. If we're doing any sort of overrides with colors using different navigations on different uh, pages, we have override fields where we can upload a dark or a light logo and then an interaction also changing the color of the uh, of the links so that we make sure if clients updates uh, kind of a link in the navigation that that's going to be migrated across uh, the whole website and we don't have to tell them okay update the navigation here update the navigation here here and here which is going to just cause more and more confusion and then the final thing for the style guide are the fonts so if you go to the project settings uh, and then go to the font settings also we want to make sure that we're uploading fonts as custom font files. Ideally, all of the fonts should be in a WAV format, but sometimes you can, like for some free fonts or whatever, you cannot find the, the, the free format itself. So we can upload it as OTF uh, or kind of free, like, or any sort of file that you have that front. But we are avoiding Google fonts and Adobe Typekit type fonts as they're kind of conflicting with the GDPR policies and then also conflicting with the speed of the website itself. Um, and also avoiding kind of choosing fonts from Google uh, directly from Webflow because in this instance, kind of you're going to be loading a lot of different fonts. And then finally, also make sure that you don't use the fonts that are preset in the Webflow on the bottom right because they're going to be loading the Google fonts also. So, on that front, uh, we've passed over the first kind of part of verifying a website and that is a style guide. And then we're going to be migrating to the next thing and that is usability and design. So stay tuned for the next video. Thank <laughs> you.